today we are going to learn about the wound management uh, you all familiar with wound management but uh, let's see so if uh, what are the changes is there any change in management of palliative care today uh, we have uh, uh, ms anna daniel rao with us uh, she is a um, bsc nurse uh, and she did her uh, certificate course in pain and palliative medicine uh, with us in 2017 and also she did her nf nfpm that is uh, national fellow of pain palliative nursing from uh, institute of uh, palliative medicine calicut last week uh, i i am happy to say that uh, last week the result came she uh, has the uh, first position she got the first position Con congratulations anna for that and uh, she has lot of experience now she is working as a nursing tutor at G H Patel Nursing College, Karma Sir. Uh, she has a uh, lot of experience in palliative care too. Uh, welcome and over to you, Anya. Thank you once again. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and it is a great privilege to work with uh, Pellium, and I always enjoy uh, sharing my knowledge and. Uh, uh, i uh, expect the same thing from the participants also whenever you are asked please share your experiences so that uh, we all can improve in our care for the patients so let us move uh, to the session uh, and today we are uh, going to discuss about the care of pressure so uh, you all must have seen in your uh, during your training also and uh, during your care uh, in general nursing also patients with the uh, pressure so right and whenever the patient receives uh, patient gets any bed so it comes uh, on nurses head that we have not given proper care not attended the patient properly uh, there may be many other reasons also so we are going to revise and we will see how uh, pressure sore is dealt uh, in the patients uh, during the palliative care setting okay so uh, any wound what is it it is the injury to the skin and the tissue lying underneath and uh, mainly it is developed uh, because of unrelieved pressure uh, there are other uh, causes also like moisture and all we will see further and why it is so important in palliative care we know that our main aim of palliative care is providing comfort to the patient but how the person will be in comfort uh, zone when he is uh, having pressure so it can be a small also it can be big also right so patient's comfort is totally lost when the patient is developing this so right so and the very nature of our palliative care patients they tend to develop it very easily right? so it is on our head that we give care and also we give proper education Uh, teach uh, the techniques how to take care to the caretakers of the patient so that patients don't re uh, uh, develop this pressure so but so this should never be forgotten so let us see the causes right? now uh, pressure friction and shear force these three are the major problems uh, and major uh, cause factors of the pressure so it is said that if patient uh, uh, i mean it takes only 6 hours to develop pressure so but it will not get healed it will take many uh, much more time to heal it okay, so that is why it is very important and uh, patient will develop uh, pressure sore when uh, there is localized pressure uh, of more than 70 mm of hg over a particular bony prominence right so it becomes very much essential for us as nurses that we prevent any kind of 
uh, pressure on bony prominences. Uh, friction is another factor. Uh, and because of friction, what happens? It will cause abrasion to the skin layer. And the uh, skin will, uh, many times we find that it may be rubbing or against the clothing or against the bedding. And many other things like uh, while giving uh, bedpan or removing bedpan, but the much more friction uh, is caused during those nursing care procedures also. Uh, third one is shear force. So it is the force parallel to skin. Okay, here the two surfaces will move in opposite direction. You might be remembering that when patient is slipping down in the Fowler's position, right? Patient slips down towards the uh, foot end, and we try to grab the uh, clothes of the patient and we try to uh, bring him. Up. So you can imagine the uh, the force, two forces uh, against each other. Uh, what are the risk factors? These risk factors especially increase the development of pressure so uh, in palliative care setting. All our pa uh, patients, you will uh, they will fall in one or the other. Uh, risk factor category. So first is impaired sensory uh, perception. Patient is not able to find out what is hurting him. So can't tell you that what is happening. Uh, then uh, impaired physical mobility. Naturally, that is the foremost cause uh, because uh, our most of our patients are not able to be mobile on their own and they are dependent on the caretakers. So these patients are also one of the uh, at risk. Altered level of consciousness. We know that when the patient is unconscious, semi-conscious, uh, they will be uh, not knowing what is happening to them. Uh, fecal and urinary incontinence. Always the bed linen will be wet. Right? Uh, many times we do put patients in uh, the uh, various, uh, I mean, uh, diaper or anything like that. But uh, then again, uh, cause is the same because uh, there is uh, wetness, right? There is more moisture and it creates other problems also. So that we will discuss later. Altered mental status also. Here patient is not knowing what is happening to him. Patient may be in delirium or patient can be having dementia, right? Uh, totally uh, state of confusion. Uh, he is not able to decide what is right and wrong to him, not able to take care of himself, right? Uh, not able to decide about the situation. Uh, when malnourishment uh, is there, again, patient, uh, the tissues are deformed and not able to heal themselves, right? So a major problem. Uh, dehydration also, whenever there is dehydration, uh, there is uh, again uh, lack of fluid and we know that the cells need fluid medium to survive, right? So again, uh, there will be drying of the tissues and easily crack will come up. Edema, anemia, hypoxia, hypotension. Here again, the cells are at danger and uh, they will not be able to heal properly. There will be more pressure over the local site. Uh, small blood vessels will tear off yeah, and uh, proper oxygen supply is not there to the tissues. So uh, the problems of healing also will take place. Excessive body heat will again uh, play a major role because the tissues will dry up. Okay? And uh, with every one degree temperature increase, it will also cause 10% increase in the tissue metabolism requirement. Right? So that will again create a major problem. Advanced age also, we know that uh, many old age people, they tend to develop pressure sore and the wound becomes larger and la larger day by day. Chronic medical conditions like diabetes, 
right here again uh, it can be neuropathy also it can be infection also cardiovascular disease is also we know that there will be major problem in the circulation and because of that the patient will end up in uh, major uh, problems on uh, wound care will be a difficult task so uh, if we look at the pathophysiology in short uh, various risk factors will act on the local area okay especially over the bony prominence because there the padding is less right and when the uh, there is increase in the pressure and it exceeds the normal capillary pressure it will cause occlusion and tearing of the small blood vessels and there will be reduced uh, blood circulation and ischemic necrosis will take place that's what we call it as pressure sore now let us not forget the stages we all have learned this at one or the other point right so let us review it quickly stage 1 is uh, the state of erythema here what happens is that the skin remains intact uh, but it will be non blanchable when you uh, apply pressure it will not blanch it will not turn into white color uh, discoloration will be there as you can see uh, very clearly in the adjoining uh, picture there can be edema uh, and pain also can be present so these persons are at risk patients okay we have to remember that they should not uh, go into second stage Uh, from uh, any stage patient may be but should not go further uh, into the next stage that is our aim so this will uh, involve only the epidermal layer of the skin now what happens in the second stage uh, here the patient may be having blister okay so partial thickness of the skin is lost you can see in the picture and there will be shallow crater like ulcer right it will be red in pink, uh, red pink color okay? but it will not have any slough uh, now uh, and the damage will be to the epidermis layer and the dermis layer it will be of course painful to the patient third is full thickness skin is lost now uh, fat may be visible here okay and uh, but still bone tendon and muscle are not exposed okay so here the layers which are involved are uh, epidermis dermis and subcutaneous tissues and as the subcutaneous tissue has a poor blood supply uh, many times it becomes uh, difficult to heal in this stage and uh, if uh, further care is not taken then necrosis will occur very uh, fast uh, stage 4 is full thickness tissue loss and you can see the bone also here right so it is one of the deepest and extending into muscle tendon or bone too and uh, breakdown of the supporting tissue will also be there not any uh, type of the bed so we need to measure it so here in this picture we you can see the measure tape also uh, there is unstable ulcer also what is it the uh, mainly the uh, wound will be covered with slough and uh, by looking at it you will not be able to know at what stage it is the depth will be unknown many times there can be a mixed uh, uh, injury also so very hard to diagnose because bottom of sore will be covered by the slough or asha and the color may appear yellow green brown like that too right so once we do it uh, dress it properly then the proper staging can be done uh, many times this type of ulcer will need surgical a repair also uh what can happen if proper care is not done for the bed sore so it can further lead into cellulitis right so that is inflammation of soft tissues surrounding tissues will take place and further edema and all will be seen 
uh, bone and joint infection can also easily occur when uh, the uh, depending on the stage of the uh, injury or you can say the bed sore sepsis can easily set in because uh, it will give good conditions for microorganisms to uh, develop and flourish so sepsis can also uh, take place very easily so what is caregiver's aim main aim should be to relieve pressure and prevent further complications so uh, we will discuss each in uh, quite a bit of detail uh, care of skin and pressure points how to do, go about so care of skin first and foremost is hygienic care right we need to uh, give good attention to the patient's hygiene a thorough cleaning of the body should be done uh, whether the patient is given bed bath or bathroom bath we need to give proper attention to all the skin folds uh, especially groin popliteal area under the arm between the digits of hand and feet uh, even under the breast when the patient is fatty especially that becomes a big problem neck uh, folds also and many times on thighs also right so any skin folds they should be uh, taken care of thoroughly and behind the ears not to forget that because patients many times get bad bed so there behind the ear and you can imagine the poor uh, situation of the patient uh, then what to do change the position every two hourly right so that is uh, we will see in the next uh, few slides also bed always should be wrinkle free we know that and always avoid when the patient is in the bed and we are making occupied bed not to pull the bed sheet uh, against the patient's body that will increase the friction a uh, regular inspection whenever we are giving any kind of the skin care to the patient or uh, general observant uh, is also very much essential so as nurses we should be good observants uh, skin care especially in palliative care we need to uh, remember that after uh, the good bath we need to pat dry the skin Okay, and generally, what we do is apply good talcum, good amount of talcum powder. But in palliative care, we don't do that. We don't use talcum powder. Instead, we keep the uh, skin good, uh, supple skin by the help of moisturizer. You may wonder that how to apply moisturizer in the hot season like this, right? So the amount will vary, of course. Uh, and a second thing what we need to remember is that apply moisturizer immediately after giving bath so when the uh, skin is still moist uh, and uh, you apply moisturizer then it will uh, require less amount also and it will spread evenly right so when we are applying moisturizer in hot season like this the amount will be quite less okay, uh, compared to uh, in the uh, cold season and what we can apply not to go for very funky and very costly brands but just coconut oil may be very uh, easily available in patients home settings right so that can be enough uh, otherwise we can even uh, make use of vaseline also okay this uh, totally will depend on patients economical condition also which we have to remember uh, in great details uh, physiotherapy is equally important when the patient is in the bed uh, passive exercises is also good so uh, we need to remember when the patient is not able to uh, change the position himself or herself our help is always needed uh, not to forget recreational therapy it will help him psychologically also and whenever we are having any uh, good uh, jolling around it will always move the patient's body 
right? So any diversional therapy, occupational therapy, all is good to reduce pressure over one point. These are the uh, pressure points when a uh, patient is in different positions. So as uh, we just discussed that patient position should be changed every two hourly. So you may ask that what uh, uh, about the changing of position during night. Okay, so night just once is enough. Uh, many times we go to uh, observe the patient. Uh, so at that time we can change his position or many times patient may require uh, like a change of the diaper or a patient may like to void or like that. So at that time we can change his position. So not to forget all the points, red points are showing the uh, likelihood of the source to be developed uh, at the uh, our uh, bony prominences. Right. So when the patient is in supine position, what will happen where the source will take place? Uh, then on the sideline position, you can see where the, uh, which are the bones that are likely to develop the pressure sore. And when the patient is upside down in prone position, so where he can develop the pressure source. Right. So these uh, areas, all these bony prominences, we have to pad them nicely uh, so that uh, they have uh, cushion support. Uh, when the patient is in a uh, sitting position or when we have provided him a wheelchair, right, what uh, about that position? So here patient will require change of position every 15 minutes. If you can see it is quite often. Uh, why so? Because continuously pressure will be there on the uh, points. Okay, we just discussed that when the patient remains in the position for uh, for longer period of time, even the smallest pressure like 70 mm of uh, Hg will create a problem. It will block the micro uh, vessels. Okay, so we have to be more observant. So how to go about it? We can either pad the area. Okay, or a slight movement of the body. Uh, if the patient is able to do himself, that is well and good. Otherwise, we have to help them. Uh, so that should this should always be remembered. Uh, prevention. Uh, further, we will discuss about the skin care massaging. So how to go about it? So when we are giving him bed bath or bathroom bath, after that good massage is uh, essential. Uh, pressure points, especially when the patient is very thin, we have to avoid the uh, very bony prominences and never to uh, apply massage when the patient is already developed pressure sore. Okay, that should be remembered. Otherwise, it will cause more damage than doing good. Uh, passive stretching of all the joints is good uh, at least twice in a day uh, and each joint should be moved a minimum of 10 times. So when the patient is not able to do himself or herself, you can help him doing so. So this will also further prevent uh, atrophy of the joints right? and uh, contractures, of course and it will uh, prevent development of the deep vein thrombosis also. Positioning of pillows is should be remembered, especially when on sideline position. Uh, remember to uh, put a small pillow between two uh, uh, legs, okay? especially at the uh, place of the uh, knee joint. Okay, uh, if you if the patient is not having pillows, not to worry. We can use a small uh, cloth uh, like uh, uh, his dupatta or like that. Also, old sari, smooth material that is good enough. So all the uh, bony prominences should be padded properly. All these devices we see at. Uh, hospital, right? Like air mattresses, water mattresses, 
but now uh, air mattresses are also available on rent many a times uh, and it uh, those who are affordable can use they can buy also and uh, use at home but they are not the ultimate solutions okay uh, always skin care has to be uh, continued so this we have to especially instruct to the caretakers that once you place the patient on these uh, mattresses they should continue to take care of the skin. Otherwise, they also will uh, create a problem. And they need to see to it that the air mattress, the pressure in air mattress is not to the fullest. Okay? Not to, uh, because if it is too tight, then again, a problem can occur. It will cause too much of pressure over the uh, surface area. How these type of mattresses help? They will distribute the body weight equally. Okay, that's how they will prevent bed sores. Uh, with proper good care, most of the pressure sores will heal. Okay, and we need to see to it that they don't go into next stage that we uh, just discussed previously. And uh, healing will, of course, depend on many factors. Okay, some of the factors are given here. So you can see that general health of the patient and diet intake will greatly help in uh, healing. Uh, other is relief of the pressure on particular sore site and careful cleaning and dressing of the wound. So these three are the utmost importance. Uh, in taking care of the uh, bed sore. So how to go about uh, uh, for the dressing? Okay, so here we can uh, see to it, we have to remember that uh, we have to clean the uh, pressure sore nicely. How will you clean? We are not going to use any hydrogen peroxide or betadine, but we are going to clean with normal saline. How to make normal saline? So in one liter of uh, water, clean water, we have to add two teaspoon of salt and uh, then boil the solution for 20 to 30 minutes and then uh, store this solution, this normal saline in clean bottle. Okay. This solution we can uh, use as uh, normal saline for irrigation of wound or cleaning or even gargles or anything. Okay. So what will you do? You have to remove the dead tissue and scab or any slough that is present. Okay. But see to it that you don't remove the granulation tissues. Okay. Uh, both during your cleaning also and while changing the dressing. So when you want to change the dressing, what to do? you have to soak it nicely or tell the patient to take good bath. Okay, so with that, it will become moist and the dressing can easily come off. Uh, now, uh, many of the times the dressing is quite painful. Okay, and so when we go to the patient for dressing, they will have the uh, remembrance of the past dressing. Okay. Uh, so uh, many times we have more trouble uh, during the procedure. So that is why we have not to forget to give extra dose of painkillers or you have to uh, see to it that you uh, dress the wound after the regular timings of the uh, their painkiller uh, drugs when they are given, analgesic drugs are given. So after that, after 30 minutes, you take the procedure or otherwise give extra dose of the uh, analgesic drugs including morphine okay so whatever patient is taking we have to remember then next is uh, about the nutrition healthy diet is very very important in uh, the healing of the wound Okay, so what will you do? Give extra protein. Uh, vitamins are also important, especially vitamin C, vitamin E, 
Okay, so they are good for uh, the skin. So we have to remove. Uh, remember that. And uh, for development of healthy tissues, also regeneration of tissues will also be good when we give protein and vitamins. Not to forget the iron supplements also. And of course, the hydration. Right. So when the patient is there, we have to uh, tell the patients when he is taking orally, he is able to take oral fluids. So minimum of two liters to two, three liters of fluids during the day is good, uh, except when the you know, fluids are restricted. Uh, lifestyle changes also uh, very important, especially many patients are smoking. Right. So because of smoking, what happens that the vasoconstriction takes place. Okay. And with that, further problems of the non-healing of the tissues. So patient has to quit smoking, uh, then only uh, good care can be, uh, it can progress. Exercise is, we just discussed that how good it is. So it will help in improving circulation. And it will, of course, help in prevention of bed sores also. And uh, uh, if the patient has the problems, then it will prevent the contractures and uh, other things. Controlling of incontinence is also important. Take proper, appropriate measures. What to do? Uh, you can put the patient in diaper or uh, if necessary, uh, catheterize the patient. Okay, uh, good toileting uh, regulation is also important. Every two hours offer bedpan uh, or every four hours as per the patient's requirements, we have to remember. So there is no question of incontinence, uh, I mean, uh, conditions like that. Uh, we have to see to it. If the patient has uh, any uh, infection, then uh, antibiotics are given and it is again our responsibility to give the, uh, the medication on time. Uh, caregiver's education is also very much important. Uh, if required, then uh, surgical repair may be essential. So at that time, we have our responsibility is during pre-operative care and post-operative care. Uh, and of course, intraoperative also. So uh, many times tissue flaps will be taken, plastic surgery may be done we need to replace the injured tissues and so that the healing takes place early. Other treatment options are like hyperbaric oxygen uh, and uh, topical use of human growth factors. Okay, so when uh, the tissues are starved of oxygen, uh, oxygen is given at high pressure uh, uh, so that uh, the regeneration of the tissues will take place. And uh, uh, in this particular method, three times higher pressure of oxygen is used uh, directly on the uh, injured part. And human growth factors are well known for uh, treatment. Uh, they are responsible for uh, quick cell metabolism during the wound healing and quick uh, recovery of the wound can be take place. Many times uh, we find that uh, there is a sharp. Okay, so here uh, use of vinegar is also done. Uh, so in that uh, one part of uh, the vinegar and nine parts of the normal saline is used and uh, the uh, dressing material is dipped into it and then uh, placed over the uh, HR. So slowly uh, the HR will get removed. This particularly is used when uh, there is a lot of HR and we are not able to see uh, on which uh, I mean stage of bed sore is. So at that time, it is especially used and it gives good uh, result also. What to do when the, uh, the wound becomes very uh, stinging? Okay, so at that time, metrogel tablet powder is used. 
uh, normal metro gel powder we have uh, tablets we have to crush them and preserve the uh, powdery uh, metro gel in airtight container and when once you are done with the uh, dressing when we are once you have cleaned the wound after that sprinkle the uh, metro gel powder or take it on the dressing material and then apply it over the wound so that will take care of the order uh, in many rural places uh, papaya leaves are used raw papaya is also used and aloe vera pulp is also used for the care of pressure sore so when there is uh, even uh, surface uh, what you can do is apply the raw papaya thin slices of it and when there is uneven surface of the wound at that time you have to mash the papaya or the leaves and then tick it over the uh, material dressing material and then apply it over the wound uh, aloe vera also has hygroscopic action so it will remove excess uh, fluid from the um, wound and it helps in the uh, healing of the bed so uh, so let us see about the role of the nurse uh, let us summarize what to do so we need to assess the client right, who all are at risk right? so at that time we can use the uh, scale also right bread and scale we will see for in the next slide skin condition at least twice a day you observe uh, inspect the skin uh, inspect each of the pressure site how it is whether it has increased or decreased always document it with help of uh, ideally with nowadays photograph assess uh, for dry any dry skin or moist whether it is remaining moist always there is there any break in the skin uh, assess for mobility of the patient, what is the circulatory status, uh, whether peripheral pulses are present or not, any edema is there or not, uh, neurovascular status of the patient, how it is, uh, then uh, presence of incontinence is there or not, nutritional and hydration status, okay. what are the other uh, health problems, uh, like patient has diabetes or not, patient has hypertension or not, any other problems. Okay, so these things also need to be assessed. So here is our bread and scale. Many of you might be knowing it, right? So once uh, you have to tick mark uh, where the patient stands okay, and then uh, do the total of it. Okay, so all the factors you can see, sensory perception, all the risk factors, moisture, activity, mobility, nutrition, and friction. And so we can uh, scale them. We write the points here and do the total. Okay? And then you can categorize your patient where he stands. So, uh, and uh, every shift needs to be, uh, we have to see to it that we give over to the next shift. Okay? So not to forget any shift should not be skipped. So uh, these are the some of the interventions under uh, different headings, especially when we are preparing care plan. Okay, so what are the interventions for the patients who are having uh, loss of sensory perception? Right? So what to do? Uh, so uh, in that it is uh, given interventions for the patient when the patient is uh, incontinent, what to do? Right. So that's how uh, it is categorized. So we know where uh, is our patient under which section. So accordingly, we can deal with uh, uh, his status. <clears throat> Avoid friction and shear pressure, what to do, depositioning, prop, uh, what technique we need to use, not to drag him in the bed, by holding the clothes, right? use of comfort devices. Nowadays, uh, we have uh, stopped using any donut shaped uh, uh, placements, especially below the knee and all. 
because it again compresses the micro blood vessels in particular area. Okay, instead we can use the padding by uh, soft clothes, okay, layer of soft clothes you can use or in hospital uh, we even use the uh, water filled gloves that also is good uh, in especially below the heel. Okay, these are the interventions for uh, decreased activity, what to do, turning schedule should be uh, made up and uh, that should be vigorously rigidly followed that is is what is required not to forget the patient in the bed especially when the uh, devices are used like water bed and uh, uh, air bed what to do with the poor nutrition if patient is not able to take orally then uh, rails tube insertion okay that also what to give Many times uh, patients uh, uh, get only clear fluids when patient is on Ryle's tube. So that also needs to be uh, taught to the relatives how to make uh, the pureed fluids and give. And not to forget the evaluation. So progress of ulcer need to be evaluated every four to six hours. Uh, I mean, uh, days, sorry, and measure it with the photograph. Uh, and when we are doing, uh, when patient has taken, say, for example, discharge from the hospital. So at that time, uh, if your uh, hospital is doing uh, home care, then they should be home visited, or you can take follow up with the help of the uh, phone call also. So that is what is also nowadays uh, used, especially after in COVID situation has taught us many uh, modified ways of uh, taking uh, the patient's follow up. Assist physician or surgeon in debridement whenever required, educate patient and family regarding the risk factors when patient is totally in the bed. So with this, uh, I would like to end my presentation. Uh, I hope I was clear in uh, my presentation. Uh, any uh, points to be discussed, we can do. Thank you, Anna, for the wonderful presentation. If anybody have any doubts, please ask us. Or if you want to add, put some comments, uh, you can add. Anybody? So I think all, all hospital nurses will take care of the patient's wounds. So you will have a lot of doubts. Please unmute yourself and ask. So one question, Anna, when we do dressings with betadine? Uh, generally, uh, in palliative care, we don't do uh, with betadine, but uh, if there is impaction, then it can be used. Yeah, as uh, Anna said, uh, in palliative care, we uh, don't use uh, both betadine and hydrogen peroxide. These two uh, solutions are hypochlorite solutions. It will destroy the granulation tissues. That is why we are not preferring uh, betadine and hypo, uh, hydrogen peroxide for cleaning this type of wounds. Uh, sometimes uh, maybe if there is a, a stage four or three uh, pressure ulcer there, we used to, to give, uh, they used to, to um, refer the patient to the surgeons for skin grafting. Uh, 
because, because if there is if the patient is health condition is okay we will try to uh, we will try to yes, and find out any possibility for skin grafting that time uh, so surgeon will be asking uh, maybe uh, you can clean with the betadine for this wound uh, then we uh, what we do here is we dilute the a bitard with normal saline and clean once with normal uh, bitard that diluted bitard in. After that, we will uh, use normal saline um, for cleaning once again, that part will clean. So make sure that there is no bitard in inside that wound. So that is why we uh, used to do use. If surgeon uh, prefer bitard in usage in this wound. Ideally, uh, uh, not uh, use betadine and hy that hydrogen peroxide. It's not good. Uh, one more uh, question. Can you elaborate dressing of wound according to edge of wound? Degree, sorry, degree. Degree of wound. Stage of wound uh, when the patient is in first stage itself. Uh, so we have to manage with the uh, position, isn't it? So that the skin further is not damaged. I think that can, uh, and moisture and uh, those things should be avoided. So still the patient is in first stage, so we can do that. Am I right, uh, Shiva sister? Yes, yes. Uh, if the uh, the first stage is non blanchable erythema, only red color redness will be there that time. So only thing you can do is you can prevent further pressure on that area. That is the first stage management. Uh, the second stage, as Anna uh, discussed it earlier, uh, the skin peeling was there. Skin. That uh, yeah, dermis layer is breakdown, but there is no slough. Only clean wound. Then you can clean with normal saline. That is enough. So the third stage is full thickness. That is, uh, that subcutaneous layers will be affecting. So uh, it might be uh, necrotic tissues will be there. So what you can do is you can do slough cutting. You can, uh, if if possible, you can do slough cutting. Make sure that the patient is not pain, not in pain. So you have to give. If the patient is having any any kind of pain, you can give some analgesics before that, and then. Wait for an if you are using an oral analgesics, then you can wait another 40 minutes, then you can do the dressings. Coming to the fourth, uh, yeah. So then that time you can what you can do is you can clean with normal saline and apply metronidazole. Okay. So and, and also one question came uh for metrogel tablet powder, uh, maximum how many tablets can be used? So that is depends upon the wound size you can take. And the coming, uh, the uh, coming to the fourth stage again, muscle, bone, tendon will be affecting. So that time, the same thing you can, if there is a slough there, you can do slough cutting and uh, clean with normal saline and apply metronidazole powder. And uh, also, you can see whether there is a skin grafting is possible or not. If they, if there is a possibility there, refer the patient to the surgeon and find out whether there is any possibility. So coming to the uh, uh, the fifth stage, that is unstageable. If there is a black necrotic tissues on the top of the wound, we can't assess the stage of wound. So then you can do uh, one thing. You can remove the black necrotic tissue on the top of the area. Then only you can able to find out whether the wound is affecting the, uh, the subcutaneous tissues or muscles. So what you can do is you can apply some white petroleum jelly or Vaseline on the top of the area. So maybe one or two days uh, after two days uh, that slough becomes slough, soft, then you can able to do the slough cutting easily. According to the, uh, inf if there is an infection there, you can apply metronidazole uh, powder. And also nowadays there are a lot of medications uh, uh, that, yeah, mupirosin ointment and uh, um, mega kill ointment uh, and the one more, uh, name that slough for slough we are using uh, i can't remember the name i'll uh, i'll give to you i'll tell you later so that kind of dress uh, that 
uh, ointments are available right now. But the thing is too expensive. Our patients are not affordable for that. That is why we preferring uh, that uh, metronidazole powder. This is cheap. Pathophysiology, uh, 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 shall I go back to the yes. presentation? Just... Yes, you can. Yeah. So all the risk factors we had seen here, right? So any risk factors, whatever is present in the patient, with that, what will happen? Ultimately, all will lead to the breakage or the harm to the soft tissues that are especially lying over the bony prominences. Okay, and, and when the, there is pressure, this pressure exceeds the normal capillary. Capillaries are very minute, isn't it? So the pressure will be very less in that. Okay, but when there is uh, the causative factors causes more pressure over these capillaries. So what will happen? There will be occlusion or small vessels will tear off. They will burst. Okay, and because of that, what will happen? The tissues which are uh, provided the nutrition and oxygen by these vessels, they will not get enough nutrition and oxygen. And because we, without these things, the tissues will not be able to survive. They will not be able to live now. Okay, so that's why there will be necrosis, ischemic necrosis. Ischemic means there is reduction in the circulation okay, and there will be further uh, development of the necrosis that of the tissues will take place and that is termed as the pressure so okay, so that is the pathophysiology is it clear Sony, is it clear? Okay. Any other questions? Senior has already shared that uh, that answer, that ointment name in the chat box. Debridized ointment. This will help to reduce the removing the slough. Uh, so if there is no uh, questions, uh, we can move on to the case presentation. Before we uh, move on to the case presentation, I'd like to highlight a few things. Uh, so if, if, if you see a bed bond patients, you have to instruct about uh, the prevention of uh, bed So That is very, very important. Because uh, when they are in the hospital, we are we are, the nurses will take care of the bed bone patients. We know how to take care of a bed bone patients. We know how to prevent bed uh, bed sore formation at all. So we know what are the causes of pressure also. So, but when they go back, who will take care of the patients? You have to remember always. Whenever they are in the hospital, you have to teach the patients about how to change the bed sheets for a bed bone patients. You have to demonstrate them with, in front of them. You have to uh, the, ask them to show how to remove the sheets. So otherwise what happened is uh, when they go back, they, they uh, pull the sheets under the patients. Their idea is good. They need to change the uh, sheets every day. So for that, they are they don't know how to change their bed sheets for a bed bone patient. They pull the sheets under the patients. That, uh, that time there is a chance of friction between the skin and uh, sheets. So maybe damage the skin also. So that uh, things you, uh, within the hospital, you have to give a proper instruction to the patient, sign the 
demonstration to the caregivers about how to prevent pet so so uh, always remember double uh, s k i n whenever you see a wet bond patients always remember double s k i n the first s is supporting surface you have to make sure that your patient is getting good supporting surface that is first s the second s is skin inspections regular skin inspection is needed for that patients every 2 to 3 hourly we need to change the position that time you have to tell them you, they can give a special attention on the bony prominence if there is any color change there they can give the special attention on that part and prevent further pressure on that area that is second is that the third one is k k is keep moving every 2 to 3 hours they need to change the position okay the the uh, fourth one is i i means incontinence or moisture control if the patient is have any incontinence of urine or bowel there if they are willing to put a folic catheter you can put folic catheter otherwise you can manage uh, uh, they can, you can advise them to use diaper if they are not affordable they can use uh, their own clothes but the thing is if there is any uh, uh, moisture there they need to change it as soon as possible and the last one is n n is nutrition nutrition and hydration is very very important you have to make sure that your patient is getting right protein intake diet and hydration so that is the small tip you have to keep it in mind whenever you see a bed bound patient in uh, your no hospital or anywhere you have to uh, teach the uh, this the small tip to the caregivers this way we can able to prevent uh, pressure ulcer formation and the la the next thing is uh, without the caregiver support we can't do anything so we have to uh, educate that how to we have to learn how to engage the patient and family about the caring of patient so always we uh, use the term you you should do like this you should do like this uh, like that that kind of and always we uh, will uh, blaming uh, sometimes we uh, blaming the caregivers too so instead of that you have to use you have to start the uh, word using we instead of you you can start use we so if you use the term we they they may feel more comfortable because uh, what we can do uh, together maybe let's see what we can do together for preventing pressure ulcer then yeah they are not alone they may feel uh, better okay somebody is begin them to take care of that uh, caregivers too so they feel more comfortable though so you can start uh, use the word be instead of you so that way we can able to uh, engage the patient caregivers and with the patient's care and also if possible you can give uh, some patient uh, information leaflets too that that will be very helpful to the patients and the family so okay uh, i think we can move on to the uh, case presentation uh, yes and uh, yes. so after uh, cleaning we uh, in pelium the we were just applying the good amount of vesselin right over it and if you find that there is too much of drainage and oozing is coming out then you have to uh, see to it the surrounding skin is not uh, uh, i mean becoming too much of wet wet because of the drainage so we have to remember that so padding of the wound is also very important and what kind of uh, the tape we are using because tape can also injure the soft tissues okay? they also no uh, the tapes which we are using should not be uh, very much uh, too much of strong adhesive because that also gives allergic reaction and also it will remove the healthy tissues so that also we generally use micropore for that right? soft tapes we use so that uh, needs to be seen right sister yes yes okay thank you can we move on to the case presentation okay seema 
Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Seema, staff nurse, Herbapur Kishan Hospital. I'm going to present my case presentation. Patient details are age 24 years, gender male, diagnosed T10 Asia, a paraplasia sacral pressure ulcer. Presenting complaints that sore over the sacral area and gluteal region, having mild pain, headache, loss of appetite, insomnia, suicidal thoughts. History of illness are history of fall from height of on 25, 322, while repairing tube light. He had surgical fixation of D12 fracture of Himalayan hospital Jolly Grant. After one month, he started developing that sore over the sacral and gluteal, glu, uh, gluteal region. Stage one, history of mild pain in thigh from one week, started on dressing with isole and anis and insomnia. Examination, conscious and oriented, temperature 98 Fahrenheit pulse, 80 beat per minute, respiration 22 uh, beat per minute, BP 110-80. Treatment and significant investigation, routine in investigation done, WBC 11,000, HP 11.7 gram, platelets 2.81, creatine 0 0.95. Psychological, psychosocial aspects, Patient Shubham, 24 years old, male, unmarried, living with his family. His family members are very caring and his mother takes care of him. The main source of income is from father's daily wages. He stopped praying. The medication was tablet amoxicillin 625 mg TID, tab vitamin C OD, tab Sertiline 25 mg OD. The main concern, pressure source, pain, loss of appetite, financial issues, loss of faith in God, had suicidal thoughts. The summary, patient 24 years old with paraphilia with bad source, over sacral and gluteal reason, stage one, conscious and oriented, having mild pain, Vitals are stable. He is on antibiotic analgesics and getting BD dressing with ESOL and NS. He is hospitalized for uh, deprivement and rehabilitation. He was started on high protein diet. He was also started on physiotherapy. Discussion point, what all can we do for him? How uh, can we uh, address his uh, spiritual concern? Thank you, Seema, for the presentation. If anybody need any more clarification regarding this patient story, please ask her. Otherwise, we can move on to the discussion points. I have a question. Um, how mobile is the patient? Is he moving or is he completely bedridden? Uh, he can move uh, uh, his trunk, but uh, he cannot able to move their legs. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Uh, is uh, I think uh, this is a paraplegic patient. They can she, he can able to move his upper limbs, but he is not able to move their lower part of the body. Is it right, uh, Zima? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, right. So what can you do for this patient? All participants have to give some idea. Patient is having a bed sore on the sacral region, right? So what to do? In which position should he be kept in? So please uh, share your thoughts. Yes, okay. Someone has written prone position, okay. Prone or side lying also, he can lie down, right? How big is the pressure sore? Yes, air mattress can be used, good. Change of position every two hourly, very good. Yes, counseling can be done for psychological need of the patient. Patient is very, very young, right? He has hardly seen his life. So he, uh, what he was doing previous to his injury, Anything we can find out, sister? If you are knowing what he was doing, was he a student? Uh, Zima? He is unmarried, living with, with his family. Yes. But what he was doing? For income, it's okay, but he was dependent on his father who is a daily wager. Maybe he was also helping his father in his work. Right? I think so. So now he will not be able to do his work. So uh, what he, how he can spend his time? Is he able to sit with support? If he is moving his trunk, then he might be able to Sit with support? No, ma'am. No. no. Ma'am, uh, he was bedridden. So he is always in the bed. Yes, ma'am. So what else we can do? Wheelchair mobilization, someone has written. Yes, good. He can meet his friends. So peer counseling, you can say, talking, meeting with friends or family members, because he also has suicidal thoughts, right? So how to go about? Naturally, he will get, right? All the time he is at home, he is not able to go out. So one uh, thing is good that uh, he can be moved out. Uh, maybe his bed uh, can be moved out of the house. So for some part of the time of the day, so he can see surrounding. He can chit chat with others. Or if possible, he can be placed in the wheelchair and he can be moved around. Diet also should be taken care of. What kind of diet? He already you said that he has been put on high protein diet. But uh, can he uh, afford it? As you said, uh, the father is daily wager. So who is helping in that for his diet? How the family is doing it. So we need to identify that also, whether they are getting any support. And passing time, beneficiary to uh, maybe he has the hobbies, then he can go about it. Someone has written, yes, make patient busy by writing and reading. If he's able to do, if he knows writing, another thing. Now, painting can be 
taught or some activity can be taught so that uh, he can help his father making something small things so that uh, he can start his livelihood right help his father so in that way it can be done anything else patient has loss of appetite also so what to do patient is not uh, all the time in the bed so naturally what else we can do for appetite any answers if the patient is having loss of appetite if the patient is complaining of loss of appetite with you what you will do okay someone has written small frequent meals okay okay very good any other answers then correct is order from the yes all the time he might be in the bed right and not moving out of the room maybe he might a daily wager so uh, living condition might be very poor that also can be there okay favorite foods and drinks some innovation in that also can be made with the help of the mother okay so natural uh yes natural vitamin contents can be told which can help uh, to improve his appetite some passive exercise can be taught okay pain how to reduce pain pain can be physical also psychological also so physical pain again it will depend on the type and grading right uh, depending on the type of the pain he might be receiving the uh, pain killers analgesics right as per the who letter we can move then psychological pain social pain right we have to look at the patient from the total pain point of view right not only the physical so uh, psychological and social also we discuss many of the things he has loss of faith in god so what to do about that why god has done this to me why me counseling and regular uh, regular assessment of his psychological behavior also yes so with the help of spiritual person we can do whatever uh, believe he is in right so that way can be help and that to will get uh, solved uh, slowly it will not be immediate result right to get back his faith is a difficult thing but slowly it can come and regular assessment right for psychological upsets that is very essential for otherwise you can lose the person also so with the help of the family right what else any other ideas good so we found many of the um, 
solutions. How many of these are possible actually, sister? Sorry, ma'am. All this, uh, many of the uh, discussion points are uh, taken care here, right? Uh, so, uh, how many of them can actually be put into practice? That also needs to be seen, right? So, uh, yes, he can be shown, taken to hospital garden, show you flowers and beauty, right? Seema, uh, I want to ask one question. Uh, where is the patient right now? Is he is in the hospital or he is in the home? I'm in the home. In the home. So I'd like to know about uh, what is the stages of pressure so. Ma'am, uh, stage one. Stage one. Yes, then why did you clean with ESO? Uh, yeah, I uh, saw your uh, case presentation time. You clean with ESO. Yes, uh, yeah. So then why did you clean with ESO? So uh, is there any uh, any comments? They are using ESO. Maybe I think when he was in the hospital, he might have been in the larger room, and then he might. Clean and now he is in stage one like that. Improved, that means. Ma'am, when he came to the hospital, ah. that time the wound was worse. Did you use user for uh, washing the wound? Yes, ma'am. You use user? Yes, ma'am. So I don't have any experience with uh, the usage of user. Uh, Anna, do you? Uh, yes, they. Uh, I mean, uh, usol uh, helps. It is uh, ultimately hypochlorite, you know, so it uh, removes all the slough and like that it helps. And then uh, slowly it is cleaned with uh, normal saline. Uh, irrigation is done. Uh, what they uh, use, I mean, uh, they keep the. I have seen only in uh, leg ulcers, not in the. Uh, on uh, sacral region, but they okay. need, uh, keep the part deep in the usol so mm -hmm. that all the slough and uh, get removed, and then it is irrigated with the normal saline, and then uh, whatever dressing material is to be used, any ointment or like that, it is used, it is applied, and then uh, it is closed like that. But in most of the palliative care settings, what we do is cleaning with the normal saline and then uh, use Vaseline gauze or apply the Vaseline itself over the wound and then uh, close the wound and apply the microphone. But if the wound is small, not so deep, then directly we can keep the Vaseline gauze. So that also we need to teach to the relatives how to make Vaseline gauze. Right? They can cut uh, the uh, pieces of uh, smooth cloth, which is uh, uh, nicely washed and uh, sun dried. And then uh, it is uh, at home, it is autoclave, right? uh, steamed, you can say. Right? And then uh, it is uh, dipped in, or you can put the Vaseline over it and then sterilize it. So it will be fully thick of the, they will become Vaseline gauze. And then it is kept over the wound. And then it is closed. So Vaseline is ultimately a good wound healer. It has good healing capacity properties. So that's how bed sores are taken care of in the palliative care. Here we don't use fancy uh, tubes like bitterine uh, ointment or like that. If it is uh, stinking, then use the uh, metrogen and then uh, ap apply the Vaseline gauze. If the, there is pain, then uh, along with the metrogen powder, you have to use the xylocaine jelly also. Like many times patients will complain that they have 
some stinging uh, uh, pain, no? something is sting that the honeybee or like that is stinging at the place, that type of local pain. So at that time, xylocaine jelly is also mixed with the madrogen. And then it is placed over the wound. Thank you, Anna. Uh, so uh, I think uh, now this patient's pressure sore is uh, stage one uh, or st stage one, right? Or stage, stage two. two? Yes. Stage, stage two. One. One. Okay. So only redness, non blankable erythema is there, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then you can uh, prevent further pressure on that area. Then uh, most probably the pressure sore will kill soon. The second thing is pain. So I'd like to know about the patient's pain. So what is the pain score of the patients? Where is the pain and all? So uh, can you brief about that? Um, pain was in sacred area. Sacral area. Okay. Yes. Did he take any analgesics for that? Uh, no, ma'am. No. So what was the pain score? Ma'am, pain four and five months. Not fine. So what type of pain? So you have to find out whether there is any neuropathic pain or nociceptive pain. So you have to find out that and pain, you have to find out the pain score also. If the patient is having pain, you can give some analgesics for that. And uh, find out whether that analgesic is helpful for that patient. So that is very, very important. As Anna mentioned earlier, so we have, we have to uh, find out uh, if there is a psychosocial issues there, definitely the, the physical distress will be increasing. Okay, so if the patient is having uh, pain there, for example, five out of 10 uh, pain score there. So if there is a psychosocial distress there, definitely the pain score will uh, goes up uh, because uh, maybe uh, nine out of 10, they will take. So well, always you have to uh, uh, address the other uh, aspects too. Instead of physical, you have to assess psychological, social, and spiritual aspects. So here, coming to the physical, the spiritual aspects, he has loss of faith in God also. So we have to find out the reason why is there any uh, any difficulties? Maybe he he is thinking he is uh, one of the maybe he will he is burden burden of uh, the patient's uh, family others he's on uh, the burden of uh, his family. Maybe he is not, maybe that uh, sometimes the friends and relatives are uh, not uh, coming to see him uh, frequently. That is also where uh, he is thinking, why I am living, uh, why I am uh, living like this? Better, um, uh, maybe uh, some, so maybe that kind of thing uh, will be there. So that is why he has some suicidal uh, thoughts. Better you can do uh, some counseling uh, to him and give psych uh, good psycho psychosocial support. And if uh, if he uh, if you think uh, you can uh, do some maybe psychiatric consultation also, so that will be helpful for this patient. And also uh, coming to the loss of appetite, you have to uh, think about the causes first. So why he is uh, developing loss of appetite? So what about the bowel pattern? If the this is the bed bound patient, there is a chance of constipation. If there is a constipation there, there is a uh, that patient's uh, not willing to take foods. So uh, if there is a bowel mood or not, so that is very very important. You have to identify the cause first and provide for a small and frequent diet as you uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, give a free, um, uh, the, that attractive foods uh, and also uh, you can uh, if there may be malodor if the uh, bone may be smelling uh, wound order there that is another cause of loss of appetite if they if there is a uh, cause if you identify those these things you have to control those problems so here, uh, the, the stage one pressure ulcer, that is not a cause of uh, loss of appetite. Most probably constipation, you have to identify the bowel pattern. And uh, uh, so did he get uh, 
home that home care support sister sister seema do you provide home care to the patient home care milta hai usse nahi bolna hai sorry i can't i can't hear you ma'am no ma'am no so mm. uh, yeah i think you can connect one of the home care teams maybe one of the nearest to if they are providing palliative care to the patients you can connect with them so that uh, he will get home care support also uh, and also if the uh, ngos having all ngos there they will go and meet him and talk to him so that way he can, he can able to explore his uh, concern and the difficulties and once we are uh, that uh, knows the difficulties we can able to manage we can uh, try to manage his uh, problems if you uh, are able to manage his problems then definitely we can able to improve the quality of life always you can think like that also and uh, also you can give physiotherapy to the patients uh, try to um, uh, that uh, change the maybe uh, now he this patient is always in bed bound so try uh, after physiotherapy you can think uh, from the bed to wheelchair is he is able to transfer himself uh, from without support from bed to wheelchair so then he is able maybe more independent and he is able to uh, move uh, wheelchair itself so that that is also very very important you can talk to the physiotherapist nearby and uh, get attention to uh, that part also uh, i think uh, any anything you want to add uh, anna uh, yes local support how much is the local support at uh, maybe their village or you know, their government how much they support and that also we can find out ngos of course yes so if you know other doubts uh, we Yeah, we can show a video on a pressure ulcer then we can find up we can how to prevent pressure ulcer formation we can show you that video uh how to prevent pressure ulcer Uh, we can wind up the session uh, thank you anna for the wonderful presentation thank you all for your participation and uh, your interaction uh, thank, thank you sina asima for the case presentation thank you